The story comes to us from sfchronicle.com. Now, um, I've been preaching this for a few years now that, you know, particularly in San Bernardino, when I see cops pull somebody over and they want to search the vehicle or go through the car, well over 50% of them, maybe even well over 60% of them, are young black men. Okay, it's usually somebody, a person of color that they're pulling out of the car to search their vehicle. Or Hispanic person. And I've been saying that, and people say, well, you got to bring a race card into it. Well, yeah, look at you trying to bring, make race, make it into race. It's what I see. I see it on the street. If it was the majority of white people, I would say it was the majority of white people, but it's not. It's usually a person of color, usually young black men. And this story here out of San Francisco will confirm it. <clears throat> As they say, San Francisco police continued to stop, search, and use force on black people far more often than any other race in 2021, disparities that remain striking even as the total number of these instances fell, sometimes dramatically over the past few years. These figures, which police will present to the Board of Supervisors, were made public as the department closes in on completing hundreds of reform goals recommended by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2016 following multiple controversial police killings. Yeah, the DOJ's getting their hands in a lot of different pies. Now, last year, black people were stopped at an average rate of nearly 39 times per 1,000 residents, compared to an average of seven times per 1,000 residents for white people, according to a police department report provided to the Chronicle. That's where those analysts come in and they crunch the numbers. Now, black people were also 10 times as likely to be searched uh, than white people and four times as likely than Hispanic people, the report showed. Police used force on black people 12 times more than white people, five times more than Hispanics. But the report also shows that police have reduced these types of policing tactics overall, which are often held up as a barometer to measure racial bias in policing. Well, there is racial bias. It's just, I don't know, they just judge people. Oh, look at that black guy with baggy pants. You know he's up to no good. No, it just might be some guy who likes to wear that fashion. Um, <clears throat> but cops don't think that way. When a cop sees you, you're guilty of something. Why? Because he's a cop. That's how they think. That's why when they come out on these calls for the, like these First Amendment auditors, a lot of times police come out there, they've already judged that the camera guy is doing something wrong. He's got to be doing something wrong. They called the police on us. Dispatch told us he was doing something wrong. They told him. Well, I could lie too on the phone. Yeah, he's got a gun. He don't got a gun. I know, but I told him anyway. Maybe they'll come out and punch a guy. Use of force instances dropped by 59% over the last six years from 952 instances in the first quarter of 2016 to 390 in the last quarter of 2021. And police stops of black people have fallen over the last three years from 175 stops for every 1,000 residents uh, to 28 stops for every 1,000 residents. And that's from 2018 to 2021. Now in Monday, interview in a Monday interview San Francisco chief Bill Scott said the department's next steps were to determine what's driving the disparities um, and this is a very lengthy story I mean it goes down from there I'll try to get some uh, high points here to hit for you but um, you know basically they're just saying that there's there's biased reform in in policing and out there on the street um you know scott says over time they're going down some but not enough so the question is where do we go from here and that's really where a lot of the work lies ahead where do we go how do we bring these numbers down so that they're even across the board you're never going to because people of color are always going to be looked at despairingly by the police. And then there's some, uh, you know, Shannon Walton of the Board of Supervisors makes a statement um, 
Scott says it's definitely something we acknowledge has been a struggle. This is one that we have to really continue to work out to get to a better place. Well, it's been going on for 40 something years. You think you're gonna just change it now? I mean, I don't think it's ever gonna change, unfortunately. It's the, the, the only way we can make a difference is doing this when the cops are around. Record. That's the only way we're going to make a change of any kind. But all these different reports they're doing and these, you know, analysis studies and these boards and these committees, they're not changing anything. All they're doing is crunching the numbers and showing us what's real in life. Well, the numbers are going down a little. Well, they're going down in your city. They're not going down in Chicago or Phoenix or Mesa or Aurora, NYPD, Los Angeles. Numbers aren't going down there too much, right? But the state attorney general's office began overseeing the status of the reforms in 2018. And after then, Attorney General Jeff Sessions dissolved the agreement. Uh, you know, so again, I'll put a link to this in the description box. You can read the whole thing in its entirety. I don't know if you hear that. It's a fire engine. But it basically, they're trying to find out why there's such an imbalance of black people being pulled over minus white people being pulled over. How can we tip the scale so they're even? They're never going to be even. Not as long as police can continue to judge people by ethnicity.